Yeah, that's a good one. So, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. Um, are we live right now? Mm-hmm. Hey, right. you can uh, exit if you want. Oh, hi, world. Hello. <laughs> let, let, <laughs> let me add uh, Brian and Greg real quick. Okay. Okay. You probably don't want to talk to me for a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I bring to you senior PVP designer Brian Holinka and lead systems designer Greg Street. Wow. I can't believe, hey, I'm, in, I can't believe I'm in a call with you guys. I can't believe I'm in a call with you. Wow. <laughs> it is very awesome to meet you guys. Yeah, you I, I'm going yeah. to say on the live stream, hello, everyone, and welcome to the live stream event. Hotted and I are going to host this event, and we have two special guests. Uh, it's Brian Holinka, World of Warcraft lead systems designer, and Greg Street, ghost crawler, um, and he is World of Warcraft lead system designer. Right? Did I get that right? Uh, <laughs> Close I'm enough. Almost. Yeah, yeah. almost. Almost. No! I'm Brian Holinka is World <laughs> PvP, uh, World of Warcraft lead PvP designer. Right, Greg? <laughs> Let's just start over. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Man, you guys make me nervous. <laughs> Take a deep breath. <laughs> All right, Brian Holinka, World of Warcraft lead PvP designer. Greg Street, Ghost Crawler, and he's World of Warcraft lead systems designer. There you go. That's good. There you go. We'll take it. All right. <laughs> stay. We'll stay now. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's very nice to meet you, and thank you very much for letting us interview you. Yeah. It's awesome. Anytime. <laughs> Glad to do it. All right. I just wanted to say, you know, I've been playing World of Warcraft uh, since PvC, and it's pretty much. All my content on YouTube is based on World of Warcraft, and I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for this amazing game, and I want to thank you guys personally. Well, no problem. <laughs> I want to thank you for, you know, going out there and, um, you know, having fun with the game. I was just saying to some people before how, you know, one of the things I enjoy about, you know, both you and Hotted is that you're having fun, uh, which uh, is refreshing because a lot of times people are so focused in the community about like this is wrong and you know my my you know buff my class or my class is broken and i'm getting benched so you know it's fun and i think that's why people you know are drawn to you guys is uh you're enjoying yourselves and uh you know they can see that and they appreciate that and uh they want to uh, be a part of that so awesome i um Hadid, Hadid and i are gonna be alternating questions uh so i was gonna let how get started uh all right uh i just want to say it's yeah like Sufi said it's a really it's really nice talking to you guys um, outside of Twitter. <laughs> so <laughs> my first question would be, how has social media impacted or rather influenced your decisions in the balance and WoW and has it had any effect in them? And since, I, know, I mean, I know you guys are very active on Twitter, for example, which I think it's great. Well, that's, that, I'm, I'm kind of new to it, but I know Greg's been doing it a lot of times. So he probably has a lot of great insights on how that's been been affecting things. I mean, it's, it's a really useful tool for us to kind of understand what the player concerns are out there. And, the, you know, what are the things that we hear over and over again? What are the things that we've never heard before, but we say, wow, that's actually a really good point. We should discuss that. Um, I think there's often a perception that if people yell loud enough, they can get their class buffed or nerfed. It, it, you know, it really doesn't work like that. But it is a great way for us to stay in tune with what players are saying out there. I mean, I play WoW all the time, but I play with my group of friends on my realm, and I don't necessarily know what they're talking about in the EU or Latin America or Asia. So it's great to get feedback and be like, wow, maybe shaman are a problem. People are really talking a lot about shaman. We should look into that some more. Yeah, and I think also, you know, part of it is just providing players access. I think gets them more excited about the game too. So I think that, you know, like there are people who kind of want to stay connected to the game all the time. And uh, I really enjoy Twitter far more than I enjoy forums. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to re, you know, interact with more people. Uh, forums can be very challenging just because of the amount of information uh, you have to go through. So I've enjoyed Twitter greatly. Okay. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, by the way, I have, I have the, their Twitters posted above if you guys want to check them out at, at Ghostcrawler and at Holinka. All right. Uh, my question, okay, I, I got my question. Uh, one of these questions is from social media, uh, but this is a question that, that, that's dear to my heart. It says, Were there, will there be mounted combat or aerial combat in WoW? I get dismounted all the time, and I want to be able to fight back. Have you gotten the uh, turtle shell? No, I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I started camping that guy. Uh, that's a lot of fun, actually, to uh, 
Uh, it's definitely one of those world PVP thing things. It'll be interesting, uh, you know, uh, the people who really love world PVP to see um, their reaction to the Timeless Isle and uh, like the bloody coins and the, the kind of like transforming into a third faction uh, that can go on there. Um, you know, I think there's been some experiments <laughs> with mounted combat. Um, you know, in, in terms of like what happened in Argent Crusade, that was like an attempt to try and do something, you know, that was on a mount but different, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe didn't really deliver on what people were hoping for. Um, you know, I, I think playing other games, uh, like playing um, uh, like uh, games with underwater combat, or I, I kind of feel like underwater combat is almost what flying combat would be. And I don't know if it's that great, to be honest. <laughs> it's a little hard, uh, I know. So that one I'm very skeptical about. Um, yeah, the, I don't know if I appreciate underwater combat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you think about, like, in a way, um, flying combat's had a very, or flying mounts have had a very kind of profound impact, impact on world PvP and maybe not a great one. Um, I don't know if, you know, in hindsight, knowing what flying mounts would do to the game, if, like, we'd want to do, do it again, but... They're definitely here to stay. There's, you can't take that away now. Um, but you can, you can see the difference. I think, but in terms of, like, mounted combat with, like, your, you know, your current set of spells and things, it almost would just be, like, everybody moves twice as fast. And that's how the game plays, you know. Um, so it, it could be challenging and interesting. I don't know. It might be something to experiment with and just see if we like it. Yeah, thank you. All right, Hotted? Hotted! We lost Hotted. No! Yeah. Hotted! Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, there's going to be a, a whole new ladder system in 5.4. Uh, what's the idea behind it to make the ladders more competitive? And how will be the rewards distributed? I know you mentioned that I think that top 1% one uh, one will obtain rank 1. But what about the other titles such as Gladiator, a Duelist, Bravo, Challenger? How will that be like with the new ladder system? Um, well, it'll be, uh, okay, so the, the motivations for that were a couplefold. One, we felt like arena teams had kind of become this barrier to arenas that we didn't really like. You know, you don't do, you don't have dungeon teams, you know, you don't have challenge mode teams, things that say, you can only go and do this activity with these very specific people. And, you know, it, it's kind of nice um, to, like, have your own rating and it kind of stays permanent. So... One of the things was just making it easier to get into arenas with, uh, with anybody at any time. So I think that's a really big plus. Cross Realm was just more of, you know, we have the technology that we could do it. So there's really nothing stopping us from doing it now. And, and it'll, I think, increase the amount of competition. And one of the thing I don't know if, one thing I don't know if anybody really liked, I'm sure there are a few people that liked it, was this, like, Every season, let's scatter to the different, uh, you know, our different little tiny nooks and crannies where we can get Gladiator, and then we'll all come back to Tychondrius later. It, it's just kind of, you know, that's weird. Um, yes. And I think it's better that we just, you know, have one pool and everybody's, uh, you know, evaluated against the same competition. Um, and and th that'll be a good thing. I think it'll help Q times. I think it'll help Q times. I don't know. I, I don't know how much it'll help Q times at the top end to be honest, because I think most of the people who are playing at the high end are already willing to be on the very busy um, servers so and, and, and in very crowded, top, you know, competitive battle groups. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if it'll help there or not. I'm, I'm not quite sure. But um, certainly hoping that um, that plus, you know, being able to jump into arenas with cross Realm, uh Groups, uh, you know, I'm hoping it's a big boon uh, to arena participation. Okay, uh, what about the titles? The oh, yeah, so uh, it'll be the same percentages uh, that are, are done now. Rank 1 was always just the top team, um, but we just said, okay, it'll be the top 1% because that's 0.1% uh, because that's roughly the um, percent of people that would get it each season. Otherwise, the percentages are the exact same as they were. Um, I think it might even be a little more generous uh, than what we used to have, um, depending on the math of it all. But um, it just felt like we're making this really massive change with one battle group and no teams and stuff. So yeah. we wanted to be fairly conservative and, and not change too much. So that's why the percentages are staying the same. Oh, okay. Thank I had, you very much. I had a quick question. Alex Skater5027 on the stream is asking, what classes do you guys play? Uh, we try not to talk about that. Really? <laughs> because, <laughs> as you can imagine, like, 
we have a very challenging job talking about the different classes. <laughs> and oh, yeah. if you were to say, like, if I were to hypothetically, I'm not even going to pick a WoW class. I'm going to say, you know, if I were to say I play Demon Hunter, then now the focus becomes, you know, Brian plays Demon Hunter, and let's talk about your bias towards Demon Hunters all the yeah. time, rather than talking about real imbalances. So all I could tell you is that I am an alcoholic. I have played a lot, a lot of classes and a lot of specs. Um, uh, and I greatly enjoy when PTRs and Arena Tournament Realms come around because it gives me the opportunity to try specs out uh, that I haven't before. So, All right. Um, oh, wait, I, hunters are overpowered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had another question. Uh, this goes on the previous question, how did it ask? It, how, how did it ask. Uh, will there be solo arenas or solo queue rated battlegrounds? It's a question slash suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting because we've done some experiments, right, with other, in this activity in other parts of the game like LFR and LFD and even Random Battlegrounds is this way. And um, I do see some merits to a single queue for those things, but we want to do it in the right way because we worry about it becoming like this very disposable like group of people that you encounter all the time you know you go into a random battleground you don't really form great connections with those people mm -hmm. they're just there for you to get your you know they're another tool for you to get the reward you want and when they don't do what you want you you know sometimes people act in a nasty way because there's no repercussion to them asking uh, acting that way so definitely in terms of the rated stuff i would rather we focused on helping you find other people who want to do that activity yeah. But that being said, I definitely think there is room for the player who's honor capped and wants some form of higher level of play, um, you know, like as a solo queue, like this is not a promise at all. We've like bounced around the idea of what if we had something called heroic battlegrounds and, you know, it was something for people who are very, you know, topped out in honor gear or whatnot and... Um, no, uh, no, no, no 1v1 arenas with, with statistics and <laughs> ladders. Am I, am I on the call still? <laughs> yeah, you are. Okay. Can yeah, you hear okay. us? I, I had some crazy thing. 1v1 arena, arena, I feel like it would basically draw all kinds of the wrong <laughs> oh, people. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, solo queuing for arena into like a 3v3 bracket oh, okay. is something I think maybe we could do. Okay. Uh, or a 2v2. But I think as soon as... Like we're, we're talking, we've been joking about this with Proving Grounds that, you know, we, we actually, like, now we added Proving Grounds to the game, people are going to go into Proving Grounds and be like, assassination rogues are, you know, have the lowest representation of gold in Proving Grounds, you know, you need to buff them, or uh, that was honestly a thing that we thought with Rated Battlegrounds that we were going to be like, hey, we're going to have this, you know, thing that's a lot more tolerant of ba imbalances and more classes are going to have a space. But in the end, we just have, like, people complaining about a whole other bracket uh, yeah. in terms of balances. You know, like, you know, there are Frost Death Knights who constantly complain about how good they are in arenas, but they're a must-have class in Rated Battlegrounds uh, at, at the high end. So it's, yeah. it's it, you know, it's, there's a real challenge there. As soon as we were to run 1v1 arena... Uh, yeah, oh. I understand. I, I, you know, I, I would like to see us do a little bit more to support dueling. Um, yeah. I, I really love dueling as a community building thing. Like, you know, I, I think there's these little subcultures of people who all know each other from dueling, and I think that's really awesome. So I'd, I, <laughs> I think we've had a task on the books for a very long time <laughs> to like reset cooldowns on duels. Yes, but, but that is uh, awesome. So. It, it comes up constantly, and uh, but how's the right way to do it, right? Like, uh, yeah. how would we how would we do it so it's not exploitable? That like you're raiding and you're yeah. not like, hold on, I'm gonna port the storm wind so I can duel someone or set my cooldowns and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, you know, I I knew you would be excited as soon as I said. Oh that. yeah, oh yeah. Uh, no promises. <laughs> uh, hash, hashtag no promises. But um, anyways. Uh, you know, I, I like dueling for that reason, but tying rewards to dueling seems really dangerous. Okay. Yeah. Hot it? I can see that. So, um, uh, this season, the only difference between normal uh, gear and 2200 gear was the fact that you got uh, some cosmetic items, the tabard, the cloak, 
uh, and maybe a different color in gear. Um, are you guys planning on adding rating requirement on to elite weapons again, or are you planning on adding just more cosmetic items so we can buy off the PvP vendors once we get a uh, higher rating? I think so. There's it's twofold. One, um, you know, we've talked about whether a recall recolor of gear is really that exciting. Uh, or exciting enough uh, as something to shoot for. So that's a question we've definitely asked ourselves. Um, the, the danger on giving higher eye level uh, on the gear is that it creates this gap we just didn't like. It's a very have, have not situation where, you know, at 2200, you're more powerful and it's really hard to get past 2200. And, exactly. Uh, so we didn't really like that. And we like these cosmetic solutions. We think we need more of them. Um, we think we need more things, uh, more cool things like, you know, that. Uh, some random ideas were like, you know, that that owned flag that came down on somebody you killed, uh, you know, really trying to play up that a little bit. Um, there's there's just uh, definitely, you know, and people can always tweet cool ideas they have. But generally, uh, you know, mounts are, are, mounts are also a tricky thing, too, because uh, they're expensive to make. <laughs> so it's really <laughs> tough to just say, oh, just give us a mount, you know, because okay. it's, you know, there's mounts, you know, we could get another suit of armor for, uh, you know, making a mount. So it's, it's a challenge. But, yeah, want more cool stuff uh, tied to ratings. Um, the only tricky thing is, like, I've, I've seen the suggestion of, like, well, give wrists at 1,500 and, you know, boots at 1,600 and chest piece at 1,700. But, like, does anybody really want to... Um, does anybody really want to wear green belt and blue <laughs> shoulders? Like, you kind of want it all. So that's yeah, why we, exactly. we put it all at one rating. It has to match. Right. I'd love to add on to that, too, what Brian is saying about the item level. We're pretty happy with the way the item level of the PvP gear worked for PvP in that someone who's just trying to get in or someone who rerolls an alt doesn't have this gigantic you know, mountain to climb before they feel like they can really compete again. But we don't really like yet the way the PvP gear compares to the PvE gear. We feel like... Um, even though organized PvP is more important to us than world PvP, we do agree that it has hurt world PvP. And we also just don't like the message it sends to PvP players that your item level is lower than the Raiders. You know, even if you're the best PvP player in the world, it just makes you feel like you're a second-class citizen if your item level is lower. So we're trying to come up with a, a tweak to the system in the future to where um, we don't have the crossover problem between PvP gear and PvE gear, but you still feel like once you earn the best gear in PvP, it's really good gear. Okay. I, I, I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> I wear, okay, I wear my yellow banana suit proudly. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it represents for me my pre-BC status. And now people who get rated Battlegrounds can now get my, my, my yellow banana suit. Is there anything that you can add to distinguish vanilla players? Yeah, it's a good question. I, you know, it was, it was just a, it was a thing we opened up hoping to, um, you know, help be another reward uh, for rated battlegrounds. But definitely understand that you know it offended a lot of vanilla players, and that we don't maybe do enough to kind of protect the and 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 add you know make whole things sacred that happened way in the past. It's so tempting when something is so cool to um <laughs> to, uh, to to like give that stuff away in a way that people uh kind of offends them I, I felt like at least in the rated battle, battleground situation it was yeah. like well they had to earn it they had to do something um but yeah I, I understand people are you know maybe there's something we can do you can tell me your idea swifty <laughs> I want you how you how you maybe we could give you like a, van a giant vanilla ice cream cone mace yes and yes! that could be the thing that really stands out for the vanilla yes! player, or maybe a vanilla vanilla cone tabard. I don't think you want to go down this road, Brian. <laughs> oh yeah, no promises. <laughs> we have had this goal for a while that it would be really cool to see a player and be like, "Wow, that guy's been around since BC or LK," and. It, it can't be like inspect him and look at his achievements. It has to almost be something you notice right away. Yeah. And we, we don't know what that is yet, but it's a really cool goal, and it's something we're trying to figure out. Wow. Okay, so, okay. Okay, go ahead. so um, I had this question. Uh, I know that uh, this question comes up a lot, but I was wondering if you guys think that um, PvE items will still be viable in the next patch? Uh, because I know right now that even though, um, uh, well, 
my my arena partners still use uh, uh, PVE trinkets, for example, in arenas. So I was wondering if uh, do you guys have plans to to break the barrier and say, okay, we don't want PVE PVE gear in arenas, or what do you think yeah. about it? I think there's there's this distinction that needs to be made in terms of we don't want them in arenas versus the PVP one should be better. Um, the PV the, the the trouble is often that the PVP one sh should be better. We we made a change I think in 5.0 where we felt like the game was too bursty, so we lowered the the on use trinket. Um, uh, like uh, for PVP, we lowered the on use trinket's cooldown and we lowered its magnitude, and we did the same for the on proc trinket. We basically made it proc more often, but we lowered its magnitude. So the PVP trinkets became kind of more overall, you know, the same sustained DPS but less bursty. But the PVE trinkets every tier uh, are still kind of bursty. Uh, yeah. they, they have really big um, procs and they have, uh, uh, you know, they proc less often. So the changes that we made, uh, we made two real big changes. Uh, one, um, one change was the trinkets scale down uh, like to 10 item levels below where the PvP trinkets are. So they're, in one sense, they're just lower eye level. And we scaled them pretty aggressively because uh, we have some very, you know, kind of bold, new, interesting trinkets in PvE, like with cooldown reduction and whatnot. And then rather, like in the past, what we've done with those trinkets is um, in PvP, we've said, okay, they, they proc half, or twice as much, but their duration is ha their magnitude is halved. This time we just said their magnitude is halved. And they still proc half as often. So the PvE trinkets have very similar procs to the PvP trinkets, but they don't have like five, just 5% 5 bonus damage, and they proc half as often. So there's a big trade-off there. I never get offended when, honestly, there's forums and people are debating back and forth whether the PvE trinket might be a little better, or this PvE trinket makes, you know, if you revolve your gameplay around this trinket and do this uh, gimmicky thing, um, yeah. but, you know, it's, it's, it, it works, you know, what I'm worried about is the PVP trinkets are garbage, you know, that's the, the real <laughs> challenge. So we, we made some changes there. We changed one of the other changes we made to the PVP trinkets was the, um, there was kind of a legacy issue where they were giving the, the spellcaster trinkets for proccing spell power rather than intellect because it was mm -hmm. really odd in the old days intellect was tied to your mana pool. So you would like get an intellect proct and your mana pool would go up and it was bizarre. But now it's uh, that's not the case. So we went back from spell power to uh, intellect. Okay. All right. How much time do we have? Are we good? More time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Because there's so many questions we want to ask, but I'm like I'm trying to choose which ones, which ones would would yeah, I'm gonna I'm that prioritize one. Or well, I, I have one. Uh, are we gonna Are you gonna bring uh, skirmishes back? I miss skirmishes. Yeah, and a lot of people talking about skirmishes. Uh, I think that that the you know. Are, we're going to have to just call them skirmishes. I think there's a lot of nostalgia about yeah. skirmishes, but definitely agree that there was novelty in it. You could do it solo. There was no real cost to going in there and having fun and screwing around. And those things are all really good. Um, you know, like the, the biggest question I have about that is more, do we, we need any rewards to, tied to it? Or would rewards tied to it actually be a bad thing? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who just, the only reason they used skirmishes was to check their UI out for arena, you know, like, is this all set up correctly? And then they would bail. But, you know, I think, um, uh, you know, we've talked about bringing it back and uh, we just haven't been able to do it yet. Um, but we know people want it. I'll put it that way. We know people want it very bad. Okay. Awesome. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, as, as far as I remember, one of, one of the goals was to increase the arena participation um, yeah. in this season. Has it, uh, has it actually increased? And if so, on what rating range on the mm. uh, 2K to 2200? Well, it's interesting lower... because I would also, I mean, I would, so yes, it has. Um, there are more arena teams now than, well, at least on uh, some of the battle groups I've checked, which were the bigger battle groups, uh, there are more arena teams um, now than there were last season. Um, and so I think that's good. I mostly attribute it to the Conquest catch-up cap, to be honest. I think players were more willing to gear up an alt um, halfway through the season. Uh, and so a lot of players... I don't know if... 
I don't know if it brought in a lot of you know, like new players to Arena, but I definitely think more people tried more characters. Um, oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Like, I didn't. I didn't play. Um, I believe in season in season twelve. I didn't play many alts at all, and I usually like to get high rating with several classes at the same time because it's fun. And I didn't have enough time, I guess, to level all my alts and like gear them up. So. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think um, so. That was good. Um, I think uh, it probably. I, I, I generally, I know that there are a lot of complaints, like, well, oh, there's nobody queuing at 2200. I really just think it's, the problem is the bottom fell out of arena. Um, a lot of the players who were in the middle and lower ranges stopped playing because maybe there wasn't a PVE item for them to go um, grind out or something like that. And so a lot of, uh, a lot of players started kind of, um, the, the ratings are actually started getting worse because of it. Um, so, you know, really when people want more participation and they say like add more titles or do things like this i don't really think that's what's going to get participation up i think what's going to get participation up is you know making it easier to gear up alts for some gameplay variety and uh you know some rewards to attract more people who are already playing world of warcraft but not playing arena to play arena exactly Okay. And that could also be just, you know, giving people a better introduction to Arena. I mean, what's the intro? You know, you're, let's say you're a person right now and you like PvE and you, or you like World PvP and you're like, I want to go to Arena. What do I do? You know, um, it can be pretty rough <laughs> going in there. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I have, I have a, a question. This is a question I'm just super curious about uh, the server Darkspear. Um, because we have a lot of people that come to the server and, and the server doesn't crash. The, a lot of people come visit us. There's a lot of YouTubers on Darkspear. And, and the same goes for like EU, uh, Stormscale. Are those servers like super servers? <laughs> I don't honestly know, but I would imagine, uh, I, don't, I don't really know. I would imagine <laughs> I... that if we have servers that really need more attention than other servers, then we... We'd probably focus upgrades on them, but I have no idea. I, I, I thought that, that that server was just, like, super upgraded. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's actually, if you go in there and you look in the server room, it's got, like, these two massive biceps yeah. <laughs> off the side of it, cape. And it just starts yelling at you angrily when you yeah. come in. Get out of here! I'm working out! <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, uh, um, I do have another question. Um, has there been... Has there been enough testing on the 5.4 PTR? I saw that the, that the European and North American community managers were promoting uh, arena events in order to make the queue time shorter. And um, there was a lot of posts uh, saying log in at this time in queue against the devs or whatever. Uh, did you guys get enough data or was the particip participation higher than before? I think the, the participation was higher than before. I was a little disappointed. We, I know we aligned with a, a number of uh, streamers to get on there, and a lot of them didn't for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, I, I think it was a good first attempt at that. Um, I definitely see us doing things like that again in the future. Um, I, I think the, the feedback has been pretty good. Uh, the challenge was also that knowing that damage tuning was coming down the pipe, I knew we might have to adjust uh, battle fatigue and resilience, but I kind of didn't want to do that until I knew where damage was going, you know, whether overall damage was too high or overall damage was too low um, from a PVE tuning standpoint. So it was rough that we did it really early um, just so we still had enough time to make changes. Um, and, you know, I, I, think, I think we got some good results from it, um, and it's definitely something we'll do, do more of in the future. We're kind of in this weird place where... Mm -hmm. A lot of players respond to patch notes themselves, but they don't actually get on the PTR to try out the changes. So a lot of it's kind of anecdotal, or I imagine this is what it feels like, but they don't yeah. actually try it out. Right. Yeah. Okay. I did. Did I ask about the 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 speed of the weapons? Did I ask that question? No, you didn't. No. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. I love weapons, and I love slow weapons. Will you guys be bringing back slow weapons? Three point eight to four point oh speed. Oh, really slow speed weapons. Yeah. <laughs> think, like, the problem with weapon speed is it's cool when you get a weapon that's, like, perfectly optimized because it has a slow speed. It's not cool when, like, a decimal change in the weapon speed trumps 10 item levels or something like that, which has happened in the past. That just makes it, it – it's kind of archaic for players to understand that, well, yeah. item level is usually a, signif you know, a signifier of a more powerful item, except when the weapon speed is very different or something like that. So – 
it, it's a cool feature as long as it's not too hidden and kind of too arcane. Because I noticed all the weapons are 3.6 3. now. I can't find... I, I search for them. <laughs> I've been searching for them. There's like one weapon. It's like at level 85. It's that uh, that appears in the auction house. I forgot the name of it. Uh, but I think that's like four point, no, 3.8, 4.0. Yeah. I know the item designers mm -hmm. feel a little burned from like once they make a super slow weapon, no one wants anything else and everything else is garbage. Oh, uh, yeah, I see. 3.8 see. or something like that. But it is a cool way to distinguish weapons, and we need more ways to, you know, distinguish our armored weapons from each other. So it's something we'd like to investigate more in the future. Nice. Okay, and, um, okay, as long as, as, long as the, there's enough time, I'll ask a couple more questions. I don't know how much time we have. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, just let us know. Let's do maybe, like, another 12, 13. What? Yeah, like another 30 to 35 <laughs> questions. No, um, maybe, like, a couple more. All right. And if All we right. could stop by, like, 4.15, that'd be awesome. Okay, awesome. We'll talk um, fast. So, okay, so... Uh, I read in the PP blog that um, uh, that the, there's not going to be any uh, North American or European regionals uh, uh, for for the qualification phase, and there's going to be for Taiwan, Korea, and I don't know if it's China. I think I, I don't remember. Um, do you guys um, do you guys have any information, or do you guys have any reasoning behind it, or? Um, well. Um, the, still, not much more than what the uh, blog said. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that there are no tournament arena realms in Asia, Korea, or, or Taiwan. Um, oh. So that's uh, so that's why they're having those. But um, you know, basically, all we really have to say is that uh, you know we we're listening to what you know the esports community is saying about this. The the really serious players, what they're saying, their concerns, uh, what they're unhappy with about. Um, things that are going on now, and we're having a lot of discussions about that. Um, uh, but the, the, the plan, as we released in the blog, is, uh, is what we're going forward with. Okay. All right. Um, I, I, have... hear, I hear Hildy in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. Oh, this was asked by Carlos R. Perez Mendes, and I'm curious about this, too. What do you guys think about multiboxers, especially the 40-man multiboxers? Greg, you're all over this one. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Forty man is awesome. Um, we we actually run into situations like this all the time where something is fun for an individual, and we're cool with that until it starts being not fun for a lot of other people. <laughs> so it's cool when you have like the guy with his five moonkin soul of the forest whatever thing going on until you run into like legitimate arenas and you keep hitting this guy and losing all the time because you have no chance to combat his five link computer. So it's, it's like your fun is important up until the point where it's impacting other people's fun. And then mm -hmm. we kind of have to step in and, and say, you know, it's not really cool that you're making everybody else's life miserable in order for you to kind of sit behind your keyboard and giggle. But you put up with it for now, right? <laughs> it's not, it's not, we don't have a policy saying that multiboxing is evil and those people are crossing the line or anything, as long as they're not ruining the experience for others. Okay, Look at the I number see. of hits you got on that video. Do you really want us to take? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh the, yeah, the, I like destroying multiboxers. It's a <laughs> lot of fun. <laughs> that, they're pretty fun to kill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Um, I guess like one last question from my part, and it's um, um, do you guys have any idea on how future tournaments uh, will work since uh, the 3v3 kind of concept is getting sort of torn apart? Or like since it's like individual queues, or do you guys are still working out? Like, I mean, it's it's kind of a new system, so I'm not um, sure. I don't know if I understand. Do you mean like the tournament um, arena realm, or do you mean? The, the, tournament, uh, the uh, tournament realm, yeah. Um, no, I th think we're kind of in the, we're at a, a discussion point uh, right now, a, a conversation point about this stuff. No real um, plans or anything to really say right now about it. Okay. John, do you That's have good. any final questions? Oh, um, 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 I got one or two questions left, but no, I, I, can, I can ask one, one more. Yeah. Uh, our, our Zab, he's from our live stream, our Zab, and he wants to know, uh, do you think any classes need a rework for PvP soon? I think 
the I don't know about complete rework. I think one of the situations we get into is the pure DPS classes are a real challenge uh, in PvP because everybody wants all three of them to work out <laughs> uh, and be play different and all be equally viable. And that's a tough thing to do. Yeah. Um, you know, like things like mages, for instance, being arcane, fire, and frost, they all have some, you know, fairly different benefits. And people, you know, maybe they just have always been playing Frost and until they have some reason why they would, like if Frost is just garbage, that's what it would take for them to leave Frost. Um, but, for instance, Holy, like Priests, for instance, um, they, you know, a lot of people were only playing Disc and for a long time, and then I think somebody really kind of started playing Holy and doing well with it. Oh, yeah, exactly. We have a lot of Holy Priests uh, playing the game right now, so it's it's actually pretty uh, funny how that works, and I think um, until you know, it, so it's good to see that that you know a, a, a spec that wasn't getting a lot of love is uh, is getting it. What's you know things like let's say paladins, druids, where they have both um, a range DPS, melee DPS, and healer. You know, it's the challenge there is just you know we have to give them a kit that kind of sets them apart. Um, and also make them really good in terms of uh, their damage, uh, you know, whether they're ranged. And, uh, but, but as a healer, they don't become overpowered because they have all these DPS tools and things like that. So I don't know about complete rework. I think... It, it's a good question I throw back to the community a lot is, do you want to see a game where there are 34 specs in PvP and you have to kind of learn every single CC chain and every single dispel that all of these have? Or is the game better if there's fewer specs and we can focus on balancing those and making a good experience? I don't, I don't think there's a right answer. It's just kind of getting feedback from what players think is a good experience, what we think is a good experience, and iterating on that. That makes sense. You had it? Oh, you got I, any I think Swifty, huh? uh, Swifty, you forgot about asking them. It's the Swifty NPC. Oh yeah, Swifty. there's a Swifty NPC <laughs> in, in. There's a Swifty the NPC where? What? In the temple. Oh, they don't know. About they don't know about the, my Swifty NPC. <laughs> uh, is there a John Swift? There's a John Swift. No, 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 no. It's a uh, Swifty NPC. Yeah. It's a monk reading a book in the temple. Mm. Oh, is it you? Is it me? Oh, yeah, a little monk. Look at that little monk. Oh! 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 I'll, I'll let you know. I'll get back to you. Okay. <laughs> it says, hey, Wildhead comments say it's named after you, so I guess so. Oh, okay. So Wildhead named it after you. Really? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll let you know, but I, I mean, I don't know how many other Swift. It's in the shrine. It's in the shrine. <laughs> Swift <laughs> theme. I know does there's it, a, there's a Swift it, uh, in... Does it uh, periodically, like, get up and blow its cooldowns at once? <laughs> <laughs> it will soon. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right my God. Is that book just a book of macros? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, All right, wow, guys. I think you. I need to let the developers go get back yes. to work. All right. Thank you so much. I want to I want to thank you guys for all the hard work you put into the game and you're always struggling to balance the classes in PVP. It was amazing having you on our live stream and I want to thank you Brian Holinka and uh, Greg Street Ghostcrawler. No problem. Yeah, thank you Thanks so for, for taking me. the time and coming and answer, uh, answering our question for this coming patch. And Zarhem too. You thank you. Guys mm -hmm. add so much yeah. to the game as well. It's you know some some small way we can help give back. So we we appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, thanks, guys. We really appreciate you uh, live streaming and everything. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Dude, this is amazing. I, I can't even believe it. I, I still can't believe it. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, you, for, you, you forgot else to, uh, to tell the story about oh, where you and wait, we, to go, we like, went Greg. And, like, you didn't, yeah, yeah we, we, we did a tour. They, they gave us a tour in, uh, in the Blizzard offices, and they gave us a tour, and we went through the office, uh, your office, Greg, and uh, we, they introduced us. We shook hands, but I didn't realize you were Ghost Crawler at the time. And then when we left, well, that's, the, that's funny. I knew who you were. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Apparently, you don't remember who Zarm is either, because I was the one that gave you that tour. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you gave me that tour. Okay, okay. Yep. That was with you and Athene, and yeah, I was on the whole tour. When we left, when we left the office, Athene was like, "Do you know who that was back there?" That was ghost crawling. I was like, oh, no! He looks so much more handsome in real life. I was surprised. <laughs> uh. Hey, we're looking forward to the tour this year. Yeah, for yeah. sure.
You guys will be out we'll here. We definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, awesome. heck yeah. Hey, you guys want to email them? You guys want to play arenas? <laughs> Always. I might be in there. Maybe you'll get me. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much, guys. Hey, thank you. Oh, thank problem. you, guys. Thanks Anytime. Too. You guys take care. All right. Have you too. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. Bye. Wow! Amazing. What an interview. Let me get Hada back in here. Um.